We're just gonna get this out of the way. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Now let's just talk baseball. Dylan Cease had what I can only describe as a wild 2022, posting 6.4 baseball reference war, a 2.2 ERA, a 30.4% strikeout rate, 3.10 FIP, and a 180 ERA+. Plus. To go along with a 10.4% walk rate that led all qualifying starters throughout Major League Baseball. How? Like, I remember hearing all the time as a kid, if you're gonna pitch, walks are the worst thing that you can do. Walks will always come back to bite you in the ass. So how did this man lead all qualifying starters in walk rate and still pitch this good? Like, when I sit down and think about it, there's one thing, one man, that pops back into my head every time. And it's another American League Central just icon. Wild Thing Rick Vaughn. Look, I know it was from a movie, okay? But just go with me on this. There's a term that gets thrown around in baseball that perfectly describes Dylan Cease this year. Effectively wild. Basically where your stuff is just so insanely good that it doesn't matter if you're hitting your spots. If you're just relatively around the plate, you're gonna be all right because guys can't hit it anyways. So despite the fact that he was walking so many guys, he could still be effective because his stuff is just insane. But what does it mean to truly be effectively wild? Because I feel like this term gets thrown around for guys when it might not necessarily fit for them. Because throughout Major League history, there's only been 11 seasons where a pitcher has thrown over 100 innings so we can get a good general baseline with a strikeout percentage over 30 and a walk rate over 10. And you better believe we're gonna go through those. So we had Dylan Cease this year, Blake Snell actually did it last year, Robbie Ray did it three times from 2017 to 19, joined in 2017 by Danny Salazar, Rich Harden did it in 2008, Kerry Wood twice in 2003 and 1998, Hideo Nomo in 1995, and I feel like the guy that's the perfect encapsulation of this, Nolan Ryan did it in 1987. So I took these 11 seasons and I sorted it by ERA plus. And look, I know I already have the reputation for being a stat nerd. You know what? Bite me, okay? I am. ERA plus, I feel like is gonna be a good compromise between the new school and old school. It still uses ERA, which is the more on-field productivity, like measurement of how good a pitcher was, how many earned runs they gave up. But ERA plus adjusts for league factors, how the league average was for that season, park factors, all of this stuff, and sets it to a scale of 100 being average. Anything below that is bad, anything above that is good. And like I said, with what was just drilled into me as a little kid playing baseball with just walks are bad, they'll come back to bite you every time. I expected there to be some really bad seasons on here. And that was not the case because as you're gonna see, some of this makes absolutely no sense. The only guy that had an ERA plus below 100 was Blake Snell last year who had a 92. And like I said, some of this, it doesn't make any sense. As we looked at this, strikeout percentage seemed to get better as a guy's ERA plus went down. This is a small sample size, it's only 11 seasons, and there's not a huge variance. I mean, all of these guys, the 30% plus strikeout rate is insane. So I don't really put a whole lot into this, but I just thought that was interesting. Finally, so that something can make sense with this, walk rate and home run percentage, even though it was slight, seemed to trend that as those went up, ERA plus went down. That seems pretty obvious. You give up more free base runners, you give up more home runs, you're gonna allow more runs. There was some variance with the home runs and I can really probably only point that to, it just depends on how many guys were on base when guys were giving up home runs. If you gave up a lot more home runs, but they were all solo shots, it 
ends up kind of evening out to a guy that gave up less, but was giving up three and four home run bombs, you know? All right, here's where I'm gonna make some points and I'm gonna piss some people off. So let's just get right into it. Batting average allowed increased as guys ERA pluses went down. But is this really something that the pitcher themselves has all that much control over? You can do the things to influence either more fly balls or ground balls, maybe influence a little bit of weaker contact versus harder. But once a ball is put in play, it's not really up to the pitcher. Like a ball can just find a hole or something that I'm going to get to in a second here. Maybe what could have been an error gets ruled as a hit. And now that earned run counts against you instead of it being an unearned run that doesn't count towards ERA. So there is that trend there and it obviously makes sense as the balls put in play more guys get on base or even just you know the ball finding a hole guys going first to third using a productive out like i don't know how much i really put weight into that for the pitcher because i don't think it's something that's entirely in their control and to follow up on a point that i just made a second ago the guys that were at the top in era plus they were giving up a lot less earned runs per runs total. So this is, I think, the problem when we're talking about ERA and earned runs is that for something to get logged as an unearned run, a batter gets on because of an error. An error isn't an objective stat. It's ruled by the scorekeeper. And it's all just up to do they think that that play should have been made or not? That's nothing that has to do with the pitcher. Just because somebody says that it should have been an error or it should have been a hit, does it really mean that it was? There are a lot of 50-50 calls that can go one way or the other. So I think this is the problem when we start to use something that measures how good a pitcher was on earned and unearned runs is that it's a subjective call. It's not 100% factual. So we need to look at all of the other stuff to really determine how good a pitcher was. When we're gonna talk about these guys being good because of their ERA, for some of them, there was some luck involved. There was a 50-50 call going their way and not going their way. Like, we can't ignore that fact. I also can't ignore the fact that these guys pitched really good. Their strikeout percentage was insane home run percentage, batting average allowed, all the other stuff was still pretty much below league average, like noticeably, for them to put up the high numbers that they did. So I can't say that they weren't pitching well because to give up as many free base runners as you were and still pitch this good, like you have to be a good pitcher. And this even gets backed up by two of my personal favorite stats to go to to evaluate a pitcher right off the bat their fielding independent pitching, and their strikeout to walk rate, which both were, I'll say, a little bit random. It seemed to kind of jump around, but it also seemed to have the slight trend that as those numbers got worse, guys pitched worse and they had worse ERA pluses and productivity. So can I really say that these guys weren't still pitching well? Like, no, I can't. Just because I don't like walks, doesn't mean I can say that these were bad pitchers. Like everything else still shows that they were really good. And so what does this all really mean in terms of being effectively wild? I think the big thing is we still look at that strikeout to walk ratio, pretty much all of which was all above league average for these guys. It doesn't matter as much, I think, how many walks that you're allowing as long as you're still getting a bunch of strikeouts. Because when we talk pitching, I think there's three really main outcomes that can happen. A guy either strikes out, they walk, or they put the ball in play. And now let's look at what each of those really actually mean. So first and foremost, I just have to address, I know I said in another video that I thought strikeouts were overrated. I used to, because in my mind, an out was an out. I was wrong, and I have completely changed my mind on that. A strikeout is about damn near the best thing that a pitcher can do, because when you're talking about pitching and these three outcomes, a walk is 100% that guy's getting on base. He There's no way that he can get out. But 
it limits how far him and any other base runner ahead of him that would be forced ahead they can only go up that one base so there's no probability of them going any further than that on the flip side when a ball gets put in play now we have to deal with batting average on balls in play which across major league baseball ends up sitting around 300. we've all seen those balls that just it should be an out but for whatever reason it just is hit right to the perfect spot and it's not or a ball where a guy just absolutely ropes it right at somebody there's luck that gets involved with that along with this though there's productive outs there's sack flies there's guys moving up an extra base when the ball gets put in play that can go against a pitcher even though he did his job he got an out so where the strikeout then becomes such a productive thing for a pitcher is that not only does it eliminate this 30% chance of a ball just finding a hole, but there's no way that the base runners are gonna advance as well, like barring like a wild pitch or whatever. I mean, we're talking effectively wild guys, but there's no way that just like say a ground ball to the right side when there's a runner on second, that guy can move up to third while you get the out at first. That doesn't happen with the strikeout. So these guys that are getting insanely high strikeout percentages, along with these insanely high walk rates, the walks, the batters are only moving up the one base and the strikeouts is limiting any extra bases that they could get. So yeah, they might be giving up a lot of base runners, but if the base hits and the home runs aren't coming at the absolute worst times, they're gonna kinda luck out and those runners are gonna get stranded. So this is all to say that to be effectively wild, you still have to be effective. If you're gonna lack in something this much, like giving up this many runs, everything else that you do has to make up for it. And the second that any of that starts to slip, you're gonna be in a world of hurt and all this stuff is gonna come back to bite you. Like you can only cover up your weaknesses so much. This is why I still wouldn't prefer pitchers like this. I wouldn't teach any pitchers to, to try to pitch like this because I think it's a very, very fine line between being effectively wild and just wild and not that good. But this clearly works for some guys. So drop a comment down below, let me know. Does this work for you? Would you be fine with having a pitcher like this on your staff? And do you think that this is a legit effective strategy for some guys to have? If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop a like on the video so that it can get spread out to other baseball fans and they can enjoy it as well. And make sure you subscribe to the page because we drop baseball content like this every Monday and I know you don't want to miss out on it. Once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Hope you enjoyed. Have an awesome day. I'll see you in the next one.